Argentina's gone back to phase one. So it's only essential shopping and no exercising at night time. I think we're going for the world's longest quarantine. That's how we're going to beat this. Oh, God. Every time they extend the quarantine, I get really angry and I have to spend a few days coming to terms with it again and going around the same treadmill of thinking, um, which is, you know, annoyance that they haven't, they haven't used tracking. Um, they've followed Europe, like they follow Europe, um, with lockdown. Anyway, I've just discovered in the meantime that next door, Uruguay, have had tracking and their kids are going back to school. I remember reading an article which at the time there were more cases in Uruguay than there were in Argentina. And half of those cases they'd tracked to one single woman who'd come back from a trip to Europe. Uh, she's a designer and she'd gone to a party, like a socialite. She suspected she had the virus, but she just didn't care. And tracking the virus seems to be how the countries who have not had quarantine have managed to um, do so well. So I've mentioned to a couple of Argentinians, um, you know, that there are some places in the world that haven't had quarantine and named them, you know, Hong Kong, Taiwan, South Korea, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, both of them said the same thing. They said, oh, well, you know, it's those cultures, you know, they're just very rigid and organized and, and follow orders and all of that. And they basically said as if that, that wouldn't work here. Well, now I know about Uruguay doing so well. That argument just does not hold up now because they have used meth the same methods in Uruguay. And that is a Latin cult culture. I don't understand why they don't question it. Maybe because they'll end up fucking miserable and angry like me. And I'd rather be happy. <laughs> That's probably it. I'm pretty confident now that the, 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 the audio format, or the audio files that we've got, are, are good enough quality to distribute as an audio book. You know, there's, there's no... Cool. I think the biggest thing that I had to do was, was remove the hiss between, between the gaps of speech to make it sound natural. So. Amazing. That's so cool. It's a brilliant thing to be involved in. I'm really, really pleased that I was able to contribute. Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed so, uh, it. I really appreciate it because I'm, I couldn't do it without you. I wouldn't, I really wouldn't, I wouldn't have bothered. Nick Palmer, a friend of mine who's been helping me with the audio book, um, has just told me that my book is on Amazon. I didn't even know. I'm going to need to have a look. That I wasn't told. My publisher never told me. Look! My Beautiful Psychosis, Making Sense of Madness by Amit Good. October the 15th, 2020. Pre-order price guarantee, 29.99. Ships to Argentina. Let's see, let's see how many pounds it is. What? 25 pounds? You are joking me. That cannot be. Shut up. Who's going to pay that for a book? That's a hardback, that is. God, I'm annoyed. Okay, so I was actually on Amazon.com, so I think I'm just, I just need to check if it's still a dire situation on the Amazon.co.uk as well. Okay, so it's 19.99 there, which is still a ridiculous price. You know. Anyway, I have a master plan. It is possible for me to be a number one bestseller, and it's all down to categories. Let me show you what I mean. And scroll down to find the category it's in, which is psychologist biographies. Right? The number one bestseller here is this one. Mrs. Hinch, 
So I find the number that is 16. So that's ranked 16 in the Amazon bestseller. I come over to my uh, Kindle bestseller calculator and I put 16 in there. That tells me that book is selling 861 copies a day. Well, I'm not going to beat that, am I? Having looked at every single category that my book could fit into, the one category that is easiest for me to reach number one in is tragic life stories. See look that is ranked 5056. 5056. That sold 22 books a day. I could easily sell 23 books each day for a week. You know that's 150 books. Oh, it's not. I can't do the maths anyway. <laughs> it's not that many books. So if I'm a number one bestseller for that week other people who weren't looking for my book will see it because it will appear on searches that they do. I can also use that orange sticker, Amazon bestseller, um, and then that sort of social proofs the book on my website and other places. But no, I'm going to have to change, change the category, change the description, change the price, change the release date to best position my book. And the way you can help me is actually by not pre-ordering the book. If you pre-order my book on Amazon, the date that you pre-order it will be the date of the sale. So it won't count as a sale in that first week. In the meantime, sign up to my website and get the first three chapters for free and subscribe to this vlog so um, you'll know exactly when you should order the book. Drive through Burger King. It's the new Friday night. Or maybe you'd just prefer to stay in and order it instead. Not judging. My Friday night is an extreme packet of acid sweets and a walk. And I've got another extreme <laughs> packet for when I get home. Oh my god. What does it come to? That was a bit spanglish. I meant sour sweets. Acidos is Spanish for sour. <laughs> One hundred days. One hundred fucking days. Motherfucker. One hundred fucking days. 